Hey, this is Mrs. Schoberg. I am very glad you came today to learn how to solve two-step equations. This is lesson 3.1 in your algebra book. Okay, you should have a little bit of experience with solving equations in the past, so I'm wondering if you remember how to solve the equation 3x plus 7 equals 13. Go ahead and try this problem on your own, and I'm just curious if you're going to get it right. Okay, so you want to pause the podcast, the screencast. Okay. If you got the answer x equals 2, you're probably kind of on the right track about solving equations. But I'm going to go over a refresher, and then I'll show you formally how to solve equations like this. Okay, so when solving equations, there's several things that you want to keep in mind. Okay, your goal in solving equations is get the variable alone. You want to figure out what does x or y or n or whatever it is, what it equals. So it needs to be all by itself on one side of the equation. One thing to keep in mind, just to refresh you, if you do something to one side of the equation, you must do it to the other. You have to do it to the equation to keep it balanced. So think of it like a little balance here. Here's this teeter-totter. It's in perfect balance over here. There's an x. And like a couple ones, we'll say, and here we'll say there's some more ones. Anytime you do something to one side, so say you're like taking away these from one side, if you don't do it to the other side, it's, it's going to start tipping, so this side would start getting heavier. So you have to do it to the other side so that we know we kept it balanced. Otherwise, they aren't really equaling each other anymore. Okay. Um, next tip, you want to simplify first, so if there's anything to simplify on one side of your equation, do that. And then you start undoing in the reverse order of operations. So usually we want to get rid of our adding and subtracting first, then our multiplying and dividing, then our exponents, then our parentheses, that kind of thing. It's good to undo in the reverse order of operations. And then the last thing you want to check your answers, make sure that what's, um, what you think x is really makes it true on both sides. Okay, I am pretty picky about how you solve equations um, just because this has worked really well for my students in the past. So when I see you set up an equation, I like you to first draw a line down the equal sign just so that you know I'm keeping it balanced. I want to do the same thing to both sides and always keeping you um, just focused and on track. So here's 3x minus 5 equals negative 8. So I'm trying to get x all by itself, so I have to think, um, if I'm undoing subtraction and addition first, based on reverse order of operation, how do I get rid of that minus 5? So we're trying to get x all by itself. So to get rid of a minus 5, I want to add 5, because negative 5 plus 5 is 0. That zeroes each other out. If I'm adding 5 to the left side, I need to do it to the right side, too. I need to do the same thing to both sides. Okay, and then I want you to see, if I add 5 to both sides, what's left? Okay, so 3x minus 5 plus 5, those minus 5 plus 5 cancels each other out, and I just have a 3x on this side. I had a negative 8, I added 5, so I have a negative 3 on this side. Okay, so now we have 3x equals negative 3, so 3 times x equals negative 3. I'm still trying to get x by itself, so right now it's 3 times x. To undo multiplying by x, I'm going to divide. So if I divide both sides by 3 here, I get 3x divided by 3. So like say I had x, x, x. I divide by 3. I divide into three groups. I just have an x left in each group. And I have negative 3 divided by 3. I should have the answer of x equals negative 1. So that's what I think my answer is. It's now time to check my work and see if it really works. So to check my work, what I do is I take this answer that I got for x and I plug it in my equation for x. And I see if my two sides of my equation are really equal. So I'm going to say 3x. So instead of x, I'm going to plug in negative 1. 3 times negative 1 minus 5. I want to know if that really equals negative 8. So if I work it out, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 5, that's negative 8. So that's what I was supposed to get. Negative 8 does equal negative 8. So that's a check, which means my answer of x equals negative 1 is probably correct. Okay, let's try another one. This one I'd like to see if you can try on your own. Um, so try it and come back. Check your work along with mine and see if you got it right. Okay. 
All right, so here I'm going to do the same thing. Split my equation to two sides so I know I'm always going to do the same exact thing to both sides, and I'm trying to get x alone. So I want to get rid of this plus 1. So to get rid of a plus 1, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides here. On the left side, I have negative 5x plus 1. I subtracted 1, so the 1s cancel out, and I just have negative 5x equals. I had negative 4 minus 1. That's negative 5. Okay, so it's negative 5 times x. Again, to undo multiplying, to get that so it's just an x, I'm going to divide. So in this case, I want to divide by negative 5. Negative 5x divided by negative 5. That will just give me x. And negative 5 divided by negative 5 will give me 1. So I think x equals 1, and it's always smart. It's going to be time for me to check my work. So negative 5 times 1, which is what I think x is right here, plus 1, does that equal negative 4? So negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, plus 1 is negative 4, and that's what I wanted it to equal. So that's good. My answer is probably correct. Okay, go ahead and give this one a try. From my experience in the past, problems that have division, they tend to give you some of the students a little bit more trouble, but really we're doing the exact same process. Okay, so again, I'm going to split my equation down the equal sign to help remind me to keep doing the same thing to both sides. I'm going to start solving for y in this case. So it says y divided by 3 plus 5, and that's all equal to 13. Again, I want to get rid of my adding and subtracting first, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. 13 minus 5, that gives me 8. Y divided by 3 plus 5 minus 5, those 5 cancels out, so I have Y divided by 3 only. Okay, you have to think about here. I have Y divided by 3. I want that to just be Y. In math, how do you undo division? We're going to multiply both sides to get that to cancel out, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 here. Okay, 3 times 8 is 24. Y divided by 3 times 3, if you divide something by 3, then you multiply it by 3. Those 3's cancel each other out, and I'm just left with Y. So I think the answer is 24 equals Y, or Y is 24. And again, I'm going to be smart, and I'm going to check it, especially since it's division, and that can get confusing. So I want to know if 13 really equals 24 divided by 3 plus 5. So, 24 divided by 3 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. That's what I wanted to happen, so I'm good to go, and it looks like y that really does equal 24. All right, it's time for a word problem. When we're doing word problems in algebra, most of the time I am going to ask that you write an equation to model the situation. At the beginning, it's going to seem more challenging. It's going to be tougher to you to solve it by setting up an equation than it would be just to logic it out. But by the end, you're going to be so good at solving equations that if you can write one, you'll know you have it solved. So our challenge is going to be to write the equation. That's what I'm really looking at. Can you write a good equation? Okay. So it says here, a music store sells a guitar for $120. This is $25 more than half the cost of a new guitar of the same brand. Write an equation to model the situation, and then solve your equation to find the cost of a new guitar. So I need to figure out what variable or variables I'm dealing with here. It looks like I'm trying to figure out the cost of a new guitar. I'm going to call C the cost of the new guitar. And when I write equations, I like to write it as literally as possible, not by thinking what I'm going to do to solve the problem yet, but just by going right in order. So it says, a music store sells a guitar for $120. So I'm going to start out with $120. This is, in math, the word is means equals. Okay? 25 more than half the cost of a new guitar. So more than in math means plus. I'm adding. So 25 more than half the cost. So half times C, the cost of a new guitar of the same brand. Okay, um, that looks like my equation's good. 120 equals 25 plus a half C. So in this case, I'm going to solve this equation just like I've solved my old equations. I'm trying to get C alone. To undo adding 25, I'm going to subtract 25 here. And I get 95 equals a half C. Okay, if I'm trying to get rid of multiplying by a half, I could divide by a half, but I hope you guys know that 
when you're dealing with um, fractions, dividing by a number is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I like to just go ahead and multiply by its reciprocal right away. So here I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And 2 times 95, that's 190. 2 times a half is just 1, so I'm just getting 1C or C. So I think 190 equals C. It's a word problem, so that's not a great answer. A great answer would be saying um, a new guitar costs $190. So 190 is in dollars, and that would be a good answer to solve it. Okay, let's look at another word problem. Okay. You order iris bulbs from a catalog. Iris bulbs cost $90, 90 cents each, sorry. The shipping charge is $2.50. If you have $18.50 to spend, how many iris bulbs can you order? Okay, so again, what I really want you to focus on here is can you write an equation or function to model this situation? Um, so you have to think what your variable is right away. So I'm trying to find how many iris bulbs you can order. I'm going to call n the number of iris bulbs, just because I don't really like the i variable. You could use a different variable if you want, though. And then again, I'm going to try to go very literal. So iris bulbs cost 90 cents each. So remember when you're thinking about it, you have to pay per iris bulb, and then you also have to pay a shipping charge of $2.50. So I'm going to do 90 cents for each iris bulb, so 0.90 times the number of iris bulbs, plus I also have to pay $2.50 for shipping. And I have $18.50 to spend, so I cannot have this cost more than $8.50. I'm just going to set it equals $18.50 right now. Okay, again, I'm going to solve, set up and solve this equation. Okay, so I'm going to start by subtracting 250 from both sides. And then I just get 0.90n equals 16. And I'm try, it's 0.90 times n, so to undo multiplying, I'm going to divide. And I'm going to divide by 0.9 or 0.90. I'm going to use a calculator for that one. If 16 divided by 0.9, it's giving me an answer of n equals... 17.7 repeating, okay? So again, this is a word problem, so we need to think about what makes sense. I have 17.7 repeating iris bulbs. It's asked me how many iris bulbs I can order. So I have $18.50. I cannot go over $18.50, which means this is a, a situation where I should round down. So I'm going to have 17 iris bulbs that I can order. Even though 17.7 rounds more closely to 18, I can't go over, so this is a chance where I have to round down. Okay. Let's look at the last problem, which is um, using deductive reasoning. So we're going to do the same thing, but this time when we solve an equation, we're going to justify each step using some sort of mathematical property or reason why it can happen. Um, this is usually a little bit tricky for people, but we'll practice it and see what you can do. So the problem says 8 equals negative c divided by 9 plus 12. And my job is to go ahead and solve this problem for c. So it looks like I'm going to start out first by subtracting 12 to both sides. And whenever you do a step, you need to justify it. So why am I allowed to do that? I subtracted the same thing from both sides. When I do the same thing to both sides, those are called properties of equality. So we're going to justify this by saying it's the subtraction property of equality. Okay, I'm all, that's keeping it balanced, it's the property of equality, and I subtracted the same thing to both sides. So that's called the subtraction property of equality. Okay, now the second thing that I need to do here, 8 minus 12, that's negative 4. And I just have negative c over 9. Because 12 minus 12, that cancels out. So all I did here is I subtracted. So I was allowed to do that. All I did is perform subtraction or simplified it. Okay, I have negative 4 equals negative c over 9. I'm trying to solve for c. So remember, I'm dividing by 9. To undo that, I'm going to multiply both sides by 9. And I get negative 36 equals negative c. Justify there is multiplication property of equality. I'll call it POE now. Okay, last step, I don't have c alone, it's negative c, so to undo that, I'm going to divide by negative 1, and I'm going to get 36 equals c, 
and all I did there is the division property of equality. Okay, good luck on your work.